Gus Grissom spoke with me earlier about his own philosophy on what risks he took while being an astronaut. Oh, I doubt if I have any philosophy towards the danger. I, I recognize that there is some risk, <clears throat> but uh, we just try to take as much of that out of out as we can during the pre-testing to make sure the systems are good. We recognize that there are unknowns and things can happen that, that we haven't planned for, but uh, I try to take care of this by by leaving an open mind and, and trying not to let the fellows get stereotyped in how function procedures and the way we do things and, and make sure that, at least try to make sure that they don't do anything impulsively. If we get a noise or something happens, we take a check, take time to see what we're doing and make sure that every time they move a switch or push a button that they look and they have the right one, you know. There's none of this blind, blind fool cockpit business. Gus Grissom knew what the problems are, knew what the risks are, and also knew the haunting failures <clears throat> that can accompany a space flight. His Liberty Bell 7 from his Mercury Redstone flight back in 1961 had sunk in an accident that has never, never quite adequately been explained, and Gus had always felt badly about losing that spacecraft. The senior pilot, or SP as he's called, aboard uh, the Apollo spacecraft, Lieutenant Colonel Ed White, 36 years old. In June of 1965, he made history when he became our first man to walk in space. It came just three months after Russia's Alexei Leonov had become the world's first spacewalker aboard Voshkod 1. Here's the actual film of Ed White, 180 miles over the Pacific Ocean. Ed White, superbly conditioned, who was afraid of no man and deeply believed in God. His 20 minutes outside the spacecraft, his EVA or extravehicular activity, brought us up to par in the space race. He doubled the EVA time set by Russia's Lanov. If any of our astronauts have ever been worried, they've never said so, for the record. Still, those of us who cover the space story keep asking them about the dangers, and Ed White recently answered me this way. Well, I always look forward to uh, flying, and I look forward to test flying. I haven't been in combat, so I can't say that. And in the same manner, I look forward to the, my flight in Gemini 4, and I'm really looking forward to this flight in Apollo. I think that the, the difference people might look at our work as, as uh, being perhaps dangerous or risky of sorts, but I think we train in it and work in it so much that, and understand it well enough that we don't look at it from this viewpoint. No at least I don't. I'm speaking for myself. You're aware of the risks. And we accept the risks, if there are, what risks there are, and the people we work with... Uh, do everything that's humanly possible to reduce these risks to as small as possible. And you believe in them? I believe in the, I believe very deeply in the people we work with and the crew. I certainly do. Despite the risks, which they all knew only too well, there were and are certain advantages to being an astronaut. Roger Chaffee explained to me what he wanted to gain out of his spaceflight training and experience. I asked if there were any advantages to being a young, new astronaut. Well, I don't know if it gives you any special advantages. Uh, I think NASA policy is, uh, well, I really hate to say what NASA policy is, but I think I could be around to fly for quite a few more years yet. And as to how far I want to go, I want to go as far as uh, NASA goes in, during my useful time as a pilot to them. I'd like to go on a moon flight, and if we go to Mars, I'd like to go on that. <laughs>